And why the AZ is SVO Jokes aside the realest when you hear it Coming from the Eric Bernard show with Scott Still Very young, get your phone in Here we we going up now Welcome to another episode of the Eric Bernal Show here at Almost Famous in Scottsdale, Arizona, where there's EDM, there's men shaking their ass on Thursdays or Wednesdays. There's a Magic Mike show here. Go nice. check it out if you're a woman or gay, <laughs> whatever it is that you're into or you just like men, which then if you're a guy, you're gay. We have Gatsby the Artist. Gatsby? What up, what up, what up? Put Gatsby the Artist Instagram right here. Um, you know what? Put the Backstreet Boys right underneath it. You got it. Backstreet Boys. Put the Backstreet Boys. I'm a big fan. <laughs> a lot of things have been happening. I was 86 at a club. And we'll talk about that. Nice. And five minutes later, un 86 <laughs> We won't even bring up the club because the problem was that I talked about them online, which I really didn't even, which we'll, we'll get to that. Today we have a special guest. Um, I consider him easily one of the best comedians in Arizona. And when I reference, when I go to different cities... And they go like, AZ, do you think they got anybody here that could step up to uh, L.A. or New York? This guy, I would bring him in a comedy fight any day of the week if we had to go tag team. Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reese Muniz. Mr. Oh, Reese Muniz. Oh, what's cracking? He's here. A long time coming. Where can they follow you? Let's get that over with on Instagram. Follow me at Reese Muniz on Instagram or ReeseMuniz.com. We'll put it right here. Hey. We'll put it right here. Yeah, Maybe we'll put it right here. Yeah, put I don't it know, <laughs> man. Put it wherever you want. God, no guy. homo. No homo. <laughs> you know, I've noticed with rappers, they they say no homo, but it seems like, but like they're it's pretty homo. homo. They've been doing the, the most gayest shit ever. Yeah, and so, they usually say that it's like whoever is like, and like oh, uh, who had that joke? I think it was Delia. He goes like, if you don't. If you're not gay, like, why are you getting mad about it? <laughs> like, to me, I have something up. He goes, that's like if I went, we went to a gas station and I was like, oh, I want a Butterfinger. And you go, man, fuck Butterfinger. I hate Butterfinger. You'll start going, what did Butterfinger do to you? <laughs> it's always the dudes that are talking about getting pussy the most. Yep. That are like a little sus, you know like, what I mean? you talking about it so yeah. much. I was at an after party and there was this fat white guy. And that's just because that's what he was. I want to describe his picture to you. He was the most flamboyant like he's gay he's definitely a gay guy but he was like yeah i had this girl i was ripping her apart and then like you know like that ripping her apart. <laughs> he, he, he's like you know that part on the vagina and i was like oh yeah so he tells his whole labor stories a bunch of drunk people doing cocaine and stuff and i was so mad that this story sucked at the end i go wow that's great that never happened damn that never happened he goes what do you mean i go that never happened can you show you a video no, he had no proof of nothing. And now, <laughs> Felt like a bag of sand. and now proof means nothing because it's like AI. You can you can fuck Hillary Duff on video right now. I would have been wanted. like, yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, dude, she like <laughs> her tits were like bags of sand. Bag of sand. <laughs> Reese, what's cracking? Where are you from, man? Originally, Phoenix, bro. Let's Born go. and raised. Let's go. Az raised, man. Phoenix guy. I always when I talk about Reese, and I do talk about it's you, Luis. It's my dog. And there maybe one other person, maybe. Yeah, but really just you two when I think about probably the best comedians in Arizona. It's a um, good list. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, You're yeah, on just, it. Just you two. A little bit of myself. There but you, you working. I see you. Yeah, we, we're working. But with you, well, I like Reese is a guy who's hood that just happened to be funny. But then again, <laughs> deep down, you may be like, I'm not even hood. But I don't know. Like, to me, you just always, when I first saw you, like, yeah, I do jokes. Like, I can't help it, bro. It's just <laughs> it's in my blood. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not even really from the hood, but, like, it's just. Yeah, you're a hood adjacent. Hood adjacent. Hood there adjacent. My homies are in the hood. Exactly. We all, dude, I was a, a kid that was too artsy for the hood kids and too hood for the artsy kids. So yeah. I was always in that middle ground. I'm honorary gangster. <laughs> honorary gangster. So I want to jump into it. We're not going to name the club. Was there a club that told you you couldn't <laughs> say a certain joke after you said it, and then you told that person to so go I, fuck I, themselves? I wanted to name the club. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was uh, Jim Perry's club. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew he was going to not care. I knew he was going to not say, care. You know, yeah. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Let's see. I mean, this was like five years ago, yeah. but like uh, <laughs> he got – he didn't even like – let me think how I want to say this. It was a Yelp this. review, right? It was something. Like, I did a show there. Everything was cool. I was on a show. I did some jokes. And maybe they weren't funny. Maybe they were. I don't know. You know what I mean? But somebody didn't like them. It was some <laughs> trans jokes. 
And I guess some trans person got upset, messaged JP, and we were cool. And then uh, he hit me up. I asked him what happened. And then uh, I told him what happened. And then he was like, oh, okay. And then he asked me for some spots. And I was like, no, I can't do it. Like, uh, I'm going to another show, basically. And he was like, all right, well, try funny jokes. And I was like, oh, oh. I was like, all right, like... <laughs> Well, try not to be a hack, bro. And then, uh, <laughs> and then next thing I know, I'm blocked. Yeah, I heard well, it. Yeah. But it is what it is. I mean. Yeah, I heard that. And that, that's what made me like him a lot. I was like, he don't care. I, I, mean, I, I got to defend myself. You know what no, I mean? Of course. True, true. And here's the thing. If one person complains and 98% of the crowd is laughing. Yeah. What? I mean, you got to go by majority rules. When it comes to that, you know, in hindsight, it feels like maybe we're just both giving each other constructive criticism. You know maybe. what I mean? Like <laughs> that was we a both should have leveled up. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I remember having to work at the bank and then go do open mics. There was one in Chandler. I forget where it was. I think it was the Improv Mania. Yeah. But they did it like at like some cake shop next door or something. Mm-hmm. It was like pandemic. Mm, Dude, yeah, you'd yeah, have yeah. to wait like three hours. I waited like two and a half hours to do three minutes in front of four people because everyone had left by then. Oh my god! Yeah, dude. Hey, but those shows used to be popping, bro. No, yeah, be, yeah. Before everyone, that, yeah. Like when they had the actual showroom. I know that was Improv Mania was your spot. Yeah, I fucking love Improv Mania. Shout out to Dave Speck. That's my dog. Yeah, now they have uh, Mic Drop Mania. It's mm-hmm. a cool spot too. I love that place. Cool spot. Shout out to Casey. Mm-hmm. Be doing so shows there when this comes out. Yeah, come catch me at uh, Uncle Laser, 24th, 25th, 26th, October. Uh, Uncle Laser's a crazy guy, and you'll meet him. I'll introduce you. Yeah, he looks crazy. Comes. Yeah, he's in, yeah. He a is, wild boy. He is who, he, who, he, who you think he is. It's funny, on Joe Rogan, they were like uh, talking about him because he was doing the harmonica. Yeah. And they were like, wow, Laser knows how to do the harmonica. I thought he was just a local Coke fiend. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Coke. That's how you learn how to play the harmonica. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's- he has a good bit about the harmonica, <laughs> and he actually brings out. <laughs> Brings it out, which is really good. I'm not but, gonna ruin but it. But when people start ripping on the harmonica, though, that shit, yeah, it goes hard. It's like oh soulful. hell yeah, yeah, it's from the heart. And he's good. Yeah, he's good. I'll, I'll send you a clip of him playing with Nether Hour. Shout out to Nether Hour out of Austin, Texas. My boy um, Bobby Flacco. They talk about him on Rogan all the time. I can't wait till they blow up because uh, that um, that scene is cool. Anytime people play instruments, is dope. You play instruments? You, you do music though. I beatbox a little bit. You know what I mean? You really? No. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> lies. Nah, I'm not musically like, nah, uh, nah. talented at all. <laughs> all right, maybe you just like hip hop. You music. used to live with like, um, yeah, who there was, was it? that was it. You, um, that was my roommate, Jay Reed. Jay Reed, Prime Society. Yeah. It was Prime my Society. dog. Those, yeah, exactly. It's been boys. a while since I heard from. I did them, a little freestyle yeah. there. They're working. They're always doing shows. They're always. Town. They're everywhere now. They're yeah. like. They're more than just local. And then they're cool with color, so they just be jamming, bro. Mm-hmm. They just be doing their thing, going all over. You did a show with Ralph Barbosa, right? Yeah, I've done a few. He took you to Denver? Denver was a good time a few years ago, yeah. Where'd you guys go? Comedy Works? Comedy Works. I've never been to that club, and everyone talks about it's one of the best clubs in the country. I've heard oh. nothing but good things from Denver. It's honestly. popping. Yeah. It's like an underground bunker, bro. You're like in the, <laughs> you're like in the mountain, like Dang. underground. So, it's pretty sick. And like the, the manager, the, girl, the lady who managed it, I forget her name, but they always talk about her. She was like a waitress. At yeah. Comedy Works? Yeah. That's now awesome. she's a uh, yeah, I can't owner remember and operator. Her, I, I can't remember her name off the top of my head either, but she was cool too. Yeah, and I know, I think about clubs I haven't been to. It's that one, Zany's in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, Wise Guys in Utah, I want to go to, and Hilarities in Ohio, somewhere. I forget where it's at in Ohio. And now Dave Chappelle has a club. Does he? Sheesh. Yeah, he, has, he, he has a club he opened up. Yeah, it's in his small town of, where is that? Something Where? Ohio, right? Something Ohio. Sil- uh, I was going to say Silver Lake. So, that's California. But that's something else. That's, uh, <laughs> I, think about, oh, I think about Unforgivable. Remember that clip, Unforgivable? <laughs> yeah. Mm. I took my girl to the mall. <laughs> said she want Chick-fil-A. I said, bitch, get me waffle fries. You've never seen that clip? No. Nah. You've never seen Unforgivable? That's, that's like an OG. So. Like, Run that clip right now. Internet, like, video. Let me know if you guys remember that. Anyway, got her number. The next day we went to Chicken Filet, some place in the mall. When I got there, I was like, bitch, where are all these people out here? She said, well, it's the mall. I was like, whatever, bitch, give me a chicken sandwich and some waffle fries. <laughs> and we're back. Hope you guys enjoyed that black guy saying some crazy <laughs> stuff. Some wild stuff. 
look, black people can really do some things that we can't. Like, there was a clip. Like hoop, play basketball, <laughs> football, uh, baseball. T- take your girl. You know, like, they, they do a lot of good things. And Fraud. you ever hear black coaches talk to their, yeah. You ever hear black coaches talk to, like, a, a, like a little team, like 10-year-old football players? There's a clip, guys. They talk to him like grown men. Yo, (laughs) he goes, none of that pussy shit. Yo, they literally go away. I'm going to send you a clip I just saw today. It was on your mom's house. On uh, What you call it? Is it Marshawn Lynch? (laughs) No, but Marshawn Lynch was spoken to because I guess he told people to hurry that ass up or hurry the fuck up. He said something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, uh, he told the lady, is there a man with you? Yeah, where's your, your husband at? Is there a man with you? <laughs> hey, that's the correct re- uh, response, yeah, though, Yeah, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your man. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> out of respect. And he was uh, all out of breath. He was like, yeah, I talked talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, dude. You ever see in... Now it's becoming more... I think, like, parents are becoming pussies. Like, their kid is losing at a wrestling match, and you see the guy, like, come shove the kid. I've seen that. I've or, seen like, that. shove the ref mm-hmm. or... All that. You play any sports in high school? I played football, and then I was an O lineman, so you had to do track. But you had uh, to do the yeah. fucking the field games. Yeah, yeah, fuck. yeah, that was ass. What'd you do? Shot put, shot put in uh, discus. He did the big man sports. Yeah, that man <laughs> shit. <laughs> shot I was an O lineman. I wasn't nothing. Shot put is. Imagine just training. All there was a story. Somebody was trying to tell me a story about a shot put guy from Peru. He got this guy trained every day, a hundred times a day. For hours. And when he went to the Olympics, he got, like, 40th place. And I was like, what's the point of this story? He goes, the point is that he was proud of all the hard work. I was like, this is a horrible story. It's not, <laughs> it's not even, like... Doesn't motivate yeah, me at all. Like, I'm thinking, like, he, he came with it. The rest of the games in, like, the Olympics, like, you know, the the races, the high jumps, the jump, the long jump, shit like that all makes sense. But it's like, how does discus and shot put come about? You know, what I, I, mean? I mean, it's difficult. It's frustrating if you ever do it. It is a frustrating thing that you push it so hard and it goes poop, like just yeah. over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we had a girl on the podcast. She um, she made it to the quali- Olympic qualifiers for the triple jump, right? Yeah, triple jump. But what else are you going to do with that? Like, that's it. And, you know, like... It's like a super niche, like... It's super niche. Olympic and, thing. And she said she would have made it, but she fouled out. She put, like, a piece of her toe over the line. Yeah. And she fouled out. Yeah, cut that toe off, bro. Yeah, yeah, cut. Yo, girl. And she's also famously known for... Uh, I feel like we keep talking about this, but... Yeah, fuck it. It's not like he heard it. Uh, <laughs> she was giving some guy a head, damn. and... Uh, <laughs> she said it was so down her throat. That he came and she kind of sneezed and it came out of her nose. Wow. And they call that the dragon. Yeah. Went, yeah. went up the sinuses the other way. Damn. Good for yeah. both of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She said that shit was just oozing out like boogers and shit. <laughs> I lost my shit. That's a fat load. Pause. <laughs> I do want to get some questions that people did send in <laughs> because it just reminded me. Again, these Segway. are questions randomly. A lot of these people I don't even know. Do you ever wish you were black or any other culture for that fact? When I was a kid, I wanted to be black. I mean, being black would be cool. Like, if, depends. Like, am I going to be me, but, like, with hella melanin? Yeah. So I'll just be Reese, but, like, I like darker. So I'm still... I mean, you could pick any black I'm you want. I'm still 5'10". No, you could be black. Black Reese is probably, like, 6'2", six 6'3". Six yeah, that'd be sick. Like, if I could go, like, to the league instead of telling jokes, go hoop a little bit. How about know. everything else? That's the only thing I'm thinking about, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love playing basketball. And, like, sometimes I'm just like, man, if I was just three inches taller, I would never be telling jokes, bro. All right. What's the best weight for a woman? Uh, I guess, like, if you're a man, you don't want any, I don't know. That's what's your thing. best weight? What, 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 what's the girl you like? What, they tip, what, what scales are they usually tipping? Because uh, if you were black, you'd like heavy girls. Yeah. I mean, I've knocked down some heavy ones. Oh, yeah. Even yeah. not being black. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've never really asked a girl like her weight. You know what I mean? What's the heaviest, you think? Could she be heavier than you? Uh, nah, because I think when I knocked down the heaviest, I was the heaviest I had been. So they wasn't heavier than me. It almost has to be like a ratio. Yeah, it was like a good ratio. <laughs> Reese has a really good joke about uh, heavy women doing uh, small girl shit. Can we run that clip right now for the yeah, fans and go follow him, put his Instagram while it's being ran? Look, I don't mind a big chick. Like, the thing that bothers me about big girls is they be trying to do, like, small girl shit. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know their size. Like, I was hooking up with this chick, and she tried to sit on my face. I had to slide out like a mechanic from under the car. 
Her knees popped. I was like, I don't trust these jack stands, dog. This, this thing gonna fall on me. Put the Instagram right here. Right here. <laughs> What's a comic you think that should quit in Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Let me think of some good ones. Um, He's really good gonna ones. answer it. He's dead ass gonna answer it. Some good ones. Let me think. Let me think. Cause then I don't want to give too many people some shine either, yeah, just for being yeah. bad, you know? Cause that's how bad they is. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a spectrum. Uh, man, you know what? I don't even want to put no There you go. Us, you know what I mean? Cause <laughs> I'm gonna have to see these folks at the. Just, uh, just say a name. I'm gonna bleep it out. We'll I'll say bleep. a few names in. Um, let me think. I'm trying to think of like an open mic list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Never booked on shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, who do I hate watching? <laughs> <laughs> who do you hate being behind? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like, I don't know. One time I had to watch. Well, that's a controversial pick. Yeah, and I seen him like lay down on the floor and shit, and I was like, bro, I, I can't respect no comic that like <laughs> get on all fours or get on their back on, on the stage floor. You nasty, fool. And if you want those names, you just cash app uh, Reese 100, and he'll send you those yeah. names. Other than that, they've been bleeped. Yep. All right. Would you date a girl who's a stripper? And when I say date... Someone, would you take someone serious? A girl that's a stripper, or we just topless her? or like fully nude? I think it's just topless here. <laughs> topless, there's some like I don't want to. There's fully mean, nudes here. There's some fully nudes here. Oh, shout them Sometimes out. Sometimes I separate the areas. See, the thing shout was, out, lay girls. The, the thing with fully nude is like I went to my first, or maybe not my first, but like the most recent one I went to was up in San Diego. I can't remember what it was called, but like it was fully nude, but they don't sell alcohol there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's they're that's fully the naked. Yeah, which is like if these bitches are gonna be naked. I should be a little buzz, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I should be able to. <laughs> but uh, it's just kind of sad when they're fully nude because I went into this fucking spot, bro. <laughs> they only charged me 10 bucks to get in. That's and great. then I had, like, 40 bucks. I saw three girls dance. I left with, like, $35 still. So, like, <laughs> thinking that there's three dancers that only made five bucks and they're showing pussy and everything, is, yeah, it it's is, tough. It, it, is, it is wild. You, fully nude is, you know, David Lucas has a really good joke. He says, um... Nothing makes you feel more naked than being naked with your socks on. <laughs> Dead ass. That yeah. is, that is, yeah. oh, cr- it fucked my mind up for a second. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah. Like being naked with your socks on makes you feel extra, because it's like you're ready to go somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> all the porn I watch, the black guys wear like sneakers and What socks. you put on first, your socks or your gun? Yeah. <laughs> what do you, do you, do you have sex with socks on, sneakers? Depends, it's like if I'm on the go or not. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, socks are usually on unless I'm like coming out the shower, I guess. Yeah. Or in the right. shower. But you're not fully like when you're about to fuck girl. Yeah, let me take my socks yeah, off. Yeah, I'm not too. using my big toe to like scrape off the sock. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. It's either it's either socks or I got the chucks on. You know, just pants down. <laughs> Louis uh, Bell, uh, the comic I, I did a weekend with in June, he has such a good joke. He's, I'm not going to ruin it, but he says about guys who are in a hurry, so they come over and fuck you, but they don't take their shirt off. All they do is bite their mm. shirt and hold it. I took it to the armpit. You took it to the armpit? Yeah, just <laughs> to the armpit? Yeah, the quick yeah, bit? Yeah, it, it in. So when did you start comedy, bro? I don't, I don't really know the, the genesis of Reese Muniz. Here we go. I started comedy... Seven years ago. Nice. Just, I don't know. I just wanted to do something. I remember always just like laughing, cracking jokes with the homies. I was like, let me go talk some shit. And uh, I didn't really know like the science behind stand up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've just seen whatever I've seen on TV. So I was like, all right, I'll go up there and I'll just say whatever I could think of. Yeah. But I've never spoken to a microphone or nothing. So then I go up there and I just like say, fucking nothing you know what i mean and i bomb so hard yeah i remember it was at bogey's over here in tempe mm-hmm. bombed so hard i got booed <laughs> got booed and then the dude was booing me and then he goes you're fucking boring and i was like damn bro <laughs> see you know it's and i know you get this but let me know if you i maybe i could just be projecting because it always happens to me you talk to someone they see you after a show or they know that you do comedy they go you know i think i should do that too I just tell him, hey, good luck. You know what I mean? I tell him, like, go ahead, try it. Yeah. But here's the thing. I I remember I asked someone at my job, like, about what, what's the stand-up 
in Arizona, you know, because he did comedy. And he was like, I don't know, go, fi- go fucking figure it out. And I remember going, wow, what an asshole. But now, after having, let's say, 100 people ask me, how do you get started? And having zero people ever trying to do it. I go like, oh, this is why it's frustrating. Because yeah. you want me to break it down to you. And then oh, yeah, that's the worst you're not part. even going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the worst. Or like you're giving them all this inside game. It's like you're not even going to put it to use. Yeah, because in the beginning, don't you always like, oh, like in the beginning, I feel like you're like, oh, let me tell you how to, because no one told me, like, let me put you on. I and feel, then you're like, you don't even do it. I feel like if you really want to do it, you would just do it. Yeah. It ain't so, nothing but a Google way. Famously, Tim Dillon, he told me, he goes, uh, he was at a bar stool. There was a guy, these these two kids, I forget what their name is, but they have a pretty big podcast. He said, he told, the guy, he told Tim, he's like, yo, I'm thinking about doing uh, stand-up. And he's like, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. And then guess what? The guy never did stand-up. Smart move. And then Tim told me, he goes, look, it's your job actually as a comic, Eric, to tell people not to do it. Because if they really want to do it, it doesn't matter what you say. Facts. You're still going to do it. Facts. You know? Like, I remember in the beginning, people were like, you know you should do, Eric? You should, like, just not do comedy and just, like, um, put comedy shows together since you know a lot of people. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody told me that. They said, hey, you know, you should quit comedy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, just throw shows. Throw show, because you get people to come and stuff. And I was like, nah, I'm going to do it. That's fine. That's nah, I'm going to do it. Though. And it's funny because, like, those people who... The best is when people try to put you on a game because they've done it longer. And... You pass them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, yeah. I'm not going to follow what you say. Yeah, why would I listen to you? Because you've been doing it, I've been doing it for 10 years, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I once saw at a, I think you might have been hosting it. It was um, New Faces, and there was a guy. Those are the best. And he went out there, <laughs> and he just was bombing, and he was just like, I don't give a fuck. I've worked with, and he started name dropping all these comics he worked with. So whatever, if you don't find me funny, it's all good. You know, uh, these people that are here, they, they're not even going to make it. He started getting upset <laughs> at the crowd. And then he got off and he was like, man, that was good. Do you ever see people get off stage and they feel like they killed it? And yeah. you're like, well, bro, were you not there? Yeah, yeah. I've been. Was I, that's a, I with think the story? Have, it was an older white guy. Man, I think I think you might host The thing with those new it. faces is that I've hosted so many and there's so many people on that shit and I've said a lot of fucked up shit to a lot of people on those shows, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. like No, there was a guy who just like was name dropping people from the 80s. I thought you were going to say like I was hosting and I said something to him. No, no, but he you, was I, just think, talking I think I think you may have just been hosting. Yeah, he was I mean, for the last he tried to do jokes for a minute and a half and then at the end was just saying fuck you to the audience for three and a half minutes and how he's so above this and he already done it and now he's just chilling and I'm like Okay, man. That's yeah. uh sometimes a good roast puts an end to all that shit. You know it what I does. mean? Just letting them know that like, hey, you ain't shit, bro. It does. I've I seen uh I've I've gone to do like in the beginning, like a lot of shows no one knew me and this guy was like I don't I, to be honest, I don't think he does comedy anymore. Some guy, some black kid, I forgot. And he was like, Oh, let me show you how it's done <laughs> And I was like, Alright And then the he went out and there was a couple of comics to me. He goes, has he ever seen you perform? I was like, no, but I'm after him. <laughs> and dude, it was just, I went out there and he was like, yeah, man, me and you kind of like the same. I'm like, nah, they were laughing when I was out there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember who it was? Yeah. No, dude, it was a young kid. And he was like pissed that I was like not taking his advice. Mm. And I was just like, nah. And that's the thing. I like it, going into those new faces and not like before they know I'm the host and I like just sitting in there. Just like sizing the room up. All that shit. <laughs> He's a fucking CIA <laughs> yeah, informant. Yeah. He's like China spy. Like, because you'll see people, people let it loose in 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 the in the green room for the new faces. The, yeah, show. they'll be like, yeah, this guy sucks. I don't know why this guy gets so many spots. Yeah, I mean, don't get yeah. me wrong. There are darlings of of certain comedy clubs. Yeah, yeah. That the comedy club just loves you. There's comedy clubs I go to that have never booked me independently, yeah. but headliners. And they're like, oh, you're here again. You're here again. I'm like, yeah, because y'all don't book me, you know? So I don't ever, I tell people, I'm like, you can't get, take it personal. You could if you want to. I don't know if that's going to help you out. But make it so you're undeniable. I think that's like the best advice. I think I heard Rogan say it like 10 years ago. He goes, no one can, no one can say anything if you're undeniably funny. If you just wreck the room, there's nothing that anyone could really say that, could go against that because you just did it everyone was there everyone witnessed it yeah um 
You ever fuck with a comedian, like a headliner right now that's like treated you like shit? Uh, nah. Because for the most part, they're all cool. Yeah, I've never really had too many issues with headliners. Um, nah. Did you do, did you do a guest spot for Rogan? I was we, hosting that one show. Uh, he was just there for the UFC. That's right. They were doing it at the Footprint Center, right? Yeah, Suns Arena. That shit's crazy. Yeah, I think it was Izzy Adesanya was fighting. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember who he was fighting, though. It's a big fight. Yeah. Oh, I remember that card. Yeah. Was, like, uh, Hans Kim there? This is before Hans Kim. Oh, it's before. oh, wow. This is a minute ago. This is about maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe two years. You know, people always ask us, like, I don't, like, I'm sure you, like, oh, why don't you do Kill Tony? I've done Kill Tony once, but I did it at the very end at, in Phoenix, and, like, I was one year in, oh. and it was just, like, I didn't really know what to do, and they were, like, trying to get off stage, so, you know. Uh, it always seems to be, like, the people newer into comedy end up getting on stage. Dude, let me yeah. tell you, I was in Austin. I've signed up three times, never got picked. It's fine. It'll happen. But... The peep there was this there was actually this girl from Arizona that was there, and she was the first one selected. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna show my my life is gonna change." And then I'm like waiting a couple of weeks for the episode to come out, and I was like, "This is bad." Like, who was it? I don't know. Some white chick. She follows me now. I follow her. I have to look it up. Some white chick. I follow her. North Phoenix, I think she's from. Yeah, I was talking to a headliner once, and he he put it the best way I've any heard anybody put it. It's like they need somebody to hit golf balls at. Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's like what the show's been since day yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. So that it's like to new people, it's like, what the fuck? But also yeah. like as a comic that's really doing it, to have somebody go, I was dared to do this. And you're like, bitch, why'd you take that spot? Yeah. It means more to us than them. But like to them, it's like a... It's like signing up for karaoke. It's like getting pulled up on like the price is right. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a fuck if they I mean? win or lose. Yeah, they just happy to show. be there. Yeah. Dude, and there's like some assassins in Austin that I know one guy I met, um, the guy who features for um, for Cam Patterson, Jari Knows. Oh, yeah. Great comic from Orlando. He's good. And, like, he be signing up, too. And Cam, you know, knows all them. And it, there is no, like, get you on there. I'm going to get you on there. There's none of that. Yeah. And there's another dude who opened for Brian Simpson. His name is escaping me. But he was a teacher in Baltimore. He just moved to Austin. He's good. He's, like, short black guy. And does like Anthony Jeselnik type of jokes. Yeah. And Real dead oh man. yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah, I, I, I can't What's remember his name. His name? I I'll look it up. I want to shout him out because he's he's awesome. He just became a, a door guy at, at the mothership, and I was like, yo, I need you to be manager by the time I'm back, so I can get on there. But he's good, and it's funny because he goes, he signs up every week, and he goes, it's all good. He goes, when I'm up there, it's over. Like, and that and I think that's the best way to put it. Do you have any advice for comics, Reese? Don't do it. I don't don't do that shit. <laughs> I ain't got no advice. It's not a get good to time. Grind. Get to work. Who's the? <laughs> who do you think is like the best weekend you've done a weekend with that like stands out? Not that everyone else sucks, but you know this comic stood out. Like, damn, they cool. Um, like almost like oh, I'll tell you one. DL Hughley was fucking. I sick was to thinking work of that. That shit was cool. That was a fun one because you met DL Hughley, older DL Hughley. Yeah, fly ass DL yeah, with the yeah. big hat DL. But it was like dropping knowledge. He he was a cool dude, and when they hit me up to do the show, they hit me up last minute. The feature missed his flight or something happened. He wasn't gonna be there. Oh, so they're, he usually does a two man show. So they're like, come in, fill in some time. When DL's here, we'll light you. You get off. And it was April Fool's Day. It's April first. I go up there. I'm doing my jokes. You're like, do 30 minutes. We'll light you. And then DL will come up. All right. All right. I see the light. And I'm thinking, like, all right, it's time to get off. It's 30 minutes. I'm up here. 30 minutes. Cold yeah. open. That's that's a long time, yeah, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Damn. And uh, as I'm trying to, like, put the mic stand into the thing, I'm like, all right, you guys ready for your headliner? At the improv, you can see the window of the sound booth. And I just see uh, it was Pony at the time. She was just like, nah. Like, no, nah, he's not here type shit. And so... I had to just keep killing time, bro. I had to do like an hour up front until those fools got into the building. Oh, my <laughs> God. So after like 30 minutes of everything I had, like 35 <laughs> minutes. And you crushed. I, I was doing good. And then I just was like, 
I was introducing him. I was like, you guys ready for your headliner? And then she gave me the signal he wasn't there. I was like, ah, April Fool's. And, bro, it smashed. <laughs> oh, it oh, smashed. Yeah. So then after that, I could kind of do whatever I want because they were like, ah, oh, okay, he's not here. You know yeah. what I mean? So a couple times I just, like, I went to the back of the stage, looked behind it, and, and you, they and, and you can't... Because Stefano has a story. He said he had, like, uh, <laughs> a solid 12 minutes. And they were like, you're going to do, do 15? Yeah. And then you're going to get off. And the headliner got into a car accident. Oh, <laughs> right? oh my God. He said that he had to do 15. <laughs> and then they were like, keep going, keep going. He's like, all right. And then he's like, I, that's all I have. He goes, that's all. I, that's everything. So he knows all the state capitals and shit. <laughs> so he, he's like, yo, who, what's the state capital of Idaho? What's the state? And he's like, what's everyone's birthday? He said he ran through everyone's birthday, everyone's <laughs> sign. He said he got people on stage so they could try to do comedy for two, three minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, and then they were like, he's here because he was like in a taxi and the, the cops were like, you can't leave or whatever. Yeah, I forget yeah. which comic it was. But that, he goes, yeah, man. And he goes, one, and he, he goes I ended up doing 45 minutes <laughs> and I had just started comedy. And it's like, oh, look, I tell people all the time, if, if you're doing 10 to 12 minutes and you kill, that's great. That's awesome. When you got to do 30, it's different. Yeah, it's a different pace. It's, a, it's different. It's... it's um, because 10, 12 minutes, you're kind of like, fuck, I, gotta, uh, I hope all my stuff can fit into this, you know, like, because I got, I got a 15, you know? It's a difference between, like, playing half court and full court. B that's the best there way to go. put it. That's the best way. Because I did uh, 45 at, at Tempe for Anthony A show, and I was only supposed to do 30. But they were just letting me roll. And yeah, I had yeah. so much shit that, and I was work, and I knew it was being filmed, so I just workshopped some other jokes, and some of them I posted on the Instagram. Follow me, Eric Bernal Comedy, on Instagram. And, <laughs> dude, it was so, it made me feel, you, I'll put it like this. I got off stage, and they were like, you did 45, dude. And I was like, oh, yeah? Like, and I could have kept going. Yeah. It's like after a, a certain amount of years into this, like, you start becoming more comfortable. But if you're only doing 10 minutes everywhere, and then they put you on 30, and you're like, no, I got three different 10 minute sets. It's not, it, yeah. it, it, it's hard to put them all together. Cause you, now you yeah, gotta yeah. remember. You once told me that you repeated a joke in the middle of, of a set. <sighs> I've done it twice now. <laughs> I did it yeah. once when I was like coming up, that, that sucked. But then I did, uh, I was in Hyenas, <laughs> and Dallas was me, Peter, Andrew, Oriana. And then uh, we were there with this full Michael Q. And uh, we're doing the show in the gold room. And, bro, the last show, all the shows have been going good. Everything was cool. And then the last show of the weekend, it was a late show. It was just ass, bro. And I, like, I was like, fuck it, let me fuck around. So I mixed up my jokes a little bit. And I started bombing so hard that I was like, let me just get back on track. And I, like, restarted everything <laughs> in, in, in an order that I would normally start in. But I started out of order. Oh, so I, re man. I was like... I repeated it and I said it and then everyone's just looking at me. I was like, "Huh? I say that shit already?" And then everyone just started laughing. I was like, "Yeah, like Man. boom." And that's like the sometimes that'll get you out of it. Yeah. Sometimes that'll get you out of it. I was um, cause we did a, we had Ralph Barbosa at the Dallas Hyenas, right? Yeah. Uh, the at the was it Dallas or Fort Worth? Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Yeah, it was great. That's where I was at. That's yeah, where he, he did. Um, yeah. <laughs> where it dude, went down. It's crazy because we, we did it with Neil Nanda. Shout out to Neil Nanda. He passed away last year. I always got December 23rd, but he's the reason why I got to meet Ralph. And, and Ralph was super cool. Ralph did, had a, I had to follow Ralph. You're awesome man. Bro. Yeah, I had to follow him. And he had, tw he's like, I'm working this new 20 minutes out. It's okay if I just go right in front of you. And then I have to get out of here because then they're going to fucking just all like, yeah, hunt yeah. me down. Yeah. Ralph Barbosa, one of the coolest people I've ever met. So chill, so relaxed. He had his, yeah. his shorty at the time, whoever that was. Really cool, chill, whatever. And he's so slow tempo. And he's... And then it was... I mean, when I say he was destroying the room, the whole fucking room was shaking. And then I'm like, I gotta follow this right now. But yeah, it, was also, it was also a really good set that I did. And I think... That was like the number one thing people were like, no, do you want to follow animals? Like you yeah. want to go out there after someone just destroyed it and then still keep that same tempo. Cause they were, look, I think 
that well, let's he say did, the he, place seats 250 we had only sold 100 tickets yeah and then we put him on the bill because he, he he knew neil and Neil was like yeah yeah can i put you on the flyer he's like yeah yeah he's like, i don't want to get paid nothing i just want to run 20 minutes yeah, yeah boom sold out the room in like 20 minutes for sure that's exactly what happened when we was uh in hyenas with michael that i guess somebody fell out so he filled in the the main room and then everybody was just kind of like buying tickets to like, sneak in and shit you know to, uh. from one room to the other so yeah, I, I know what you mean. Dude. But that fool, yeah, he's got that slow pace. But I think it's because he's diabetic. He got the low, <laughs> the Yo, low blood pressure or whatever the fuck's going ask, on. He, he has a joke about uh, that people, people always think I'm high. <laughs> no, he had a great joke. I don't know if it's in his special. One, still one of my favorite jokes I ever heard him say about having a gun with no bullets in it. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you ever heard yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah, that was a good one. Special. Yeah. That's in his special. It's such a fucking good joke. Yeah. And I don't know. He used I, a lot of that material for his special. Oh yeah? yeah, is it cow? Is it a uh, cowbunga? Uh, it's the last one he had on Netflix. I can't remember what the red background. I can't remember what it was called. Cowbunga, right? Yep. Um, yeah, no, and it's it, he's like, I would say him. I'm trying to think of other comics that like hit me up, like, you know, even Jeff Die, somebody I've never really even done a show with, but I hit him up. He's like, come to. He's like, I got no spots, but come to Green Room and hang out. You're a comic. I just looked up your stuff. Yeah, you're good. Come through. Like there are comics yeah. like that. I don't know He's if like I, a comics comic. I don't know why. if I'll be that person. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. It just depends. They like if you a, blew up and then random comics like, yo, can I come hang out with you in the green room? You're probably gonna go no, cause it's weird. Well, at least now like it's not just someone knocking on the door. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of go peep the IG, see who's who follows who. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. maybe you. That's what I got working for me. I got a few big comics following me. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. I as soon as a uh, one of uh, like uh, Tim Dillon started following me. Yeah, yeah. I started following his friends, like, mm -hmm. uh, but people I love, like Bobby Kelly and all these guys, and they follow me back, yeah, uh, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh, Tim follows him, boom," you know, yeah, and yeah. and to me that was always like, "Oh, they're seeing Johnny Manziel follows me," oh, yeah. so so they'll see that draft day, yeah. Johnny Manziel, Johnny yeah. football, oh yeah, he's always out of here. I, 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 we'll introduce you. He's, yeah, he's a cool dude, <laughs> really cool dude. But what's and let me know if you if you get this. Maybe I'm just the person that people do this to. Day of show. Everyone's asking, so what time does it start? So what time oh, are you I on? Get that. Yeah, oh, yeah. can I get in? Oh, it says sold out. Can I get in? Yeah. And they're like, Do you answer? I answer. And that's why I fuck up. I'm gonna uh, stop answering. It just depends who's asking. Like if family's asking, I'm like, look, you're screwed. Like you ain't getting in. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like any random person, I'm like, hey, try the door. <laughs> yeah. See what happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> Figure it out. No, and it's so far. I tell people. Especially when it's big comics, I go, this is going to sell out. Yeah. But everybody just wants a fucking personal invite, bro. It's like, I, you like the flyer. You like the story. Just fucking pull up. Yo, you know. I you got all people, the info. For the fact that people go, what times it start? Where is it at? I'm like, yo, do you understand? It's not just you asking me this question. It's 100 people asking me a question where only half of them will actually click the link, where only half of those people will actually buy the tickets. And it's like, dude, it's all the info's there. Nobody knows how to and, read the And then you either. sound like an asshole by telling people. Because here's the worst thing. Where's your next show? Why? Are you going to go? I just sent him the flyer. I had one dude, one homie ask me. He asked me a million <laughs> questions, bro. Just to not show up. Oh, my God. Fuck. That shit was annoying as fuck, bro. That is literally one of the worst things. When people are just like, yo, when's your next show? When's your next show? When's your next show? I'm like, you've asked me 10 times already and you've never come to. And here's yeah. the thing. All good. But don't ask me. I. Some people just want to see if you're still going to reply. Yeah, and some people like to keep in contact. They're yeah. like, yo, I don't give a shit about any of this. Like, I think you're cool. Even worse, the worst thing. I had a comic do this, bro. I was in two times with the Stefano and, and Timmy D. Try to knock on the green room to come in and hang out. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Here and in one, town? And one time, yeah, and one time let themselves in. Who was it? Fudge. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. De Stefano was really cool with it. Yeah. He was like, oh, no, he's he, he's like, he's big as... I'm not going to say anything to him. I'm like, yeah. I was like, yo, you can't just... He's like, nah, it's a comedy club. I'm yeah. a comic. I was like, Gerber used to do that shit. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he used to just be in the green room. And we'd just be like, yo, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> can't be here, dude. You're yeah. not. And nothing, and nothing is worse than being in a green room... Because it's happened to me maybe twice, and I knew better now to not even go into a green room if I'm not part of the show. But I knew people, so in the beginning, you're a little green, you don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. But I've seen where everyone's looking at each other and going, 
why are you here? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the worst like, feeling. Yeah, yeah why, well, you need to get <laughs> out of here. You know what I mean? And it wasn't just him. What was the other one? Oh, last April, Stand Up Live, Tim Dillon. We, all the shows were great. Last, last show of the night, um, some dude is telling Tim Dillon that he does rugby. And then uh, he goes, yeah. He goes, how is it working out? He says, not good. He goes, yeah, maybe because you live in Arizona, you know? Yeah. And he goes, what, what else fuck? do you want to do? He's a like, comedy. And the whole crowd was like, let him on, let him on, kill Tony. And he goes, and Tim, I looked at Tim, and he was just looking like, all right, whatever, it's the last show. Mm-hmm. He's like, what's your name? I'm going to introduce you. All right, guys, coming to the stage, blah, blah, blah. If someone, if that happened to you, how much time are you doing? A couple minutes, a minute or two? Get so. I'm doing 30. Yo, he did 15. <laughs> Damn, good He did you. 15, bro. <laughs> was and it then, fire? Uh, so I'll tell you, after we were done, <laughs> he says goodbye to the show. We go to the back room, and Tim goes, that family feud joke is not his joke. Yeah. He goes, and then he points out another joke. That other joke, all he did was replace this with that. And that yeah. other joke, and that's the thing. When you, you take a risk doing that in front of somebody who literally, this is what they do. They're in yeah, rooms yeah. all the time. He goes, he goes, Eric, you've heard that family feud joke. I'm like, yeah, I've heard that family feud joke. He's like, I don't know who said it, but he's like, yeah. He goes, that only would kill here, what he said. It was like stuff that was only, and that's another thing. Tim was also like, you know, when he took me to Minnesota, 2,200 white people. Theater, biggest place I've done so far, 2,200. And I shared the story many times. He said, uh, you know, 2,200 white people out there. No, 2,200 people out there. I go, yeah. He goes, you ready? I was like, yeah. He goes, no, 2,200 white people. You can't lean on that Latino shit here. And then I was like, and I laughed, and he laughed. And he was like, yeah, but go. go. These are good. These are good rooms. Like, you got to get used to everything. Bro, these guys, and it was, because I did a joke. I said, I said, how we doing in Minnesota, whatever. Where my Tim Dillon fans at? Ah. Where the black and Spanish people at? Yeah. Dead silence. <laughs> I was like, good. They should be fucking working. And then everyone <laughs> laughed. And this lady goes, you, but you're, but you're in Spanish. I go, bitch, I'm working. And it <laughs> killed. And it That's killed. Dope. That's dope. Dude, one of the best, like, um, cause I like, I do like hosting. I do, I do like, have you ever seen him? Like, you may have seen this guy travels all over the country or the valley. Like, Reese Muni. Like, I like that shit. Nothing is worse than a host going, uh, this person, what do you say the name? Yeah. Uh, Eric uh, Brunel is here. Eric Brunel. I mean, if I had a choice, I don't want to host, but I'll, no, I mean, I'm fucking I don't, hosting. If I don't, if I don't, but, yeah. like, being the feature that brings out the headliner, like a two-man show. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. That shit is dope. Because if, especially if you're a fan of the, you may have seen him on Joe Rogan, blah, blah, whatever you want. Because I think a good intro sets the tone. Yeah. Because I was in Chicago at the Laugh Factory, dude. First of all, there's a bathroom for men and women, and then there's a bathroom just for women. I was Maybe it's my, for all the studs. Dude, I had my dick out and everything, and a girl just came in. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Remember? A girl, that was, yeah, it was the one upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A girl just came in, and I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And she went and squatted down and peed. And I was like, what the fuck? And the thing is, like, over there, I forget where I'm at sometimes. I forget yeah. I'm not in Arizona where they don't play that shit. You know, like... A dude's not gonna walk into the, but they have bathrooms. Where like was that. this Laugh Factory at? Uh, it was like uptown. Uh, it's New York, on the Chicago. I mean, it's on the east side, right? Yeah, it's, it's like it's right by the, towards the water. Towards the water, yeah. Mm, damn, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. So it had a man's ba- bathroom, a women's bathroom, and a man. No, the man's bathroom was for anyone. Yeah. Why we gotta deal with that shit? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I was like, yo, I had full like half chub too, because I was looking at. it. I was like, oh, it looks all right today. And then this one, I was like, I put, I kind of yeah. pissed on myself a little bit because I pushed my dick into the urinal. And then she was just like, what's your problem? I'm like, bitch, this is the man's room. So women just go piss in any bathroom Wherever. you want? Yeah, any because bathroom. Because if yeah, it's, it's open to whoever. If not, it's a hate crime. Sure, they weren't like trans or something? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> you, I, you didn't look under the It's head? hard to tell <laughs> these. I mean, she pissed sitting down. Bro, I was uh, in Vegas this last week and... Uh, I was using the restroom at, I can't remember what casino it was. I want to say it was, where the fuck did we go? The MGM. No, 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 Mandalay Bay. Okay. I go use the restroom and I'm washing my hands and I look, I see like a ponytail and like a little blouse and some skinny jeans. (laughs) And I look, and it looked like a full ass chick. Yeah. And I was like. Am I in the wrong restroom? Yo. Oh, I, man. I was like, am I in the wrong restroom? But there's, And then I started thinking, I was like, I was just at the urinal, though. Yeah. yeah. You always <laughs> check for the urinal. <laughs> it was weird. Dude, today, IQT. Yeah. 
I'm getting a Red Bull and a vitamin water. One of my favorite two mixes. Put in a cup of ice. Tastes good. Sugar free? Uh, sugar free. Yes, sugar free. And then two sugar free. Two for <laughs> two for six. Smart. Two Smart. for six. Oh, I need it. Um, there was a, a person like we like putting like sandwiches away or something. So this person, I'm a slender, like long hair in a in a scrunchie. Okay. Right. And I passed by. And I was like, they kind of moved at the same time. I was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. And she, he goes, I'm a dude. And I was like, you have a scrunchie? Yeah. Like a woman's <laughs> scrunchie. Yeah. Not like a, like, you know, I don't know what a man's equivalent to that is, but what do men rock? Hair, hair tie? Whatever. It's all gay. Whatever. Yeah. It's, all, it's all like, don't, don't the, grow your hair long. The enough. worst ones are like the funny ones is like when you uh, misgender a stud. <laughs> 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 Bro, I was at Shoe Palace, and, and this bitch, I mean, she looked like she had the same fade as me, bro. A little fucking medium fade, slick back hair, like the just typical chola fucking stud haircut. Yeah. I was like, hey, bro, can I get these in a size 10, 10 and a half? And they turned around, I was like, oh, my fault. <laughs> let, me, like, let me just get those, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, let me tell you something. There are, <laughs> I have a few friends that used to be lesbian, and now they're having babies with men, and they're like, they, they're into men. And... <laughs> I, I put on my Twitter, I said, am I supposed to forget the days you wore big ass shirts and like backwards hats for like fucking three years and eight box? Like, it's funny what a lesbian thinks a guy dresses like. It's never the yeah. way a guy dresses. I mean, these days, though, it looks like they're shopping at the same spots. Like all, all <laughs> like, all like the, the, the guy lesbian, I don't know, what, whatever. The, the, the guy the, lesbian? The guy lesbian, whatever. <laughs> the girl that's supposed to be the dude. I'm like, you're dressed up like kids were in the fifth grade in 1998. It's literally what yeah, they, they still dress like. like 2000 hip hop. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lesbians dress like 2000 hip hop. Paris Sachet, uh, a comic, I think she's out of DC. She, I just posted her. She was like, uh, "There's women who got five kids talking about." I think I'm lesbian now. Like, no, bitch, you just want a babysitter now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, you're not missing a partner. You want an aunt. Hell yeah. yeah. Yo, she is, she has a joke about, she goes, you don't know how it is because being a lesbian, you get to pick out your dick. That's and, true. And, and you got to pick the one that's the same color as your knee. Mm, and she goes, you got to be flesh color. Yeah, you got to be that. It and, can't be the same color as your knee, though, because... Like, your genitals are always usually darker. Yeah, yeah. So that's why she said the knee's a little darker. Uh, so you okay, got to match okay. up your knees. Uh, Yo, she said, and I think she posted it, but she said, um, fuck. Oh, she says, oh, when I became lesbian, all of a sudden these, these girls want to holler at me and they be ugly. I'm like, uh-uh, I can't disappoint my parents twice. <laughs> 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 it's a fucking killer joke. But... You know, and that's another thing. When you're on stage, what do you wear? You wear your black shirt, jeans sometimes? That's kind of what I wear now. Uh, I, I used to wear a little, f like, flashier. Like, not flashier, just a design on my shirt. But then somebody told me, like, it takes away from the whole thing. I try to at least look nice, you know? Yeah, you ever see people come... Dr Shh, dude, I was in Albany. Albany. With Uncle Lazy. Yeah. And shout out to you, bro. I think your name is Joe or John, and, and you're, you're great. Shorts, khaki shorts. Oh, that's the worst. There's only like two dudes. I seen Eddie Griffin do it in one of the specials, and then Fluffy. Those are the two people that. Oh, that's get a pass. it. And, and you ain't selling uh, tickets like Fluffy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't competing with Dodger yeah. Stadium. It actually would be weird to see him in pants. It would. I've He's, always just felt like these people are paying, bro. They don't want to see no fucking dude that ain't iron his shirt. You know dude, what I mean? Like, it is. They want to see your ankles. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I know George Lopez requires his openers to wear a suit. I fuck with that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, he's suited and booted, though. Yeah, so he, he's like suited he and booted. I seen him perform like four times, and the first time was Celebrity Theater. I have wow. a video with him. I'll send it to you. <laughs> and I remember I was trying to take a picture, and it was like, fuck, and I couldn't get it to go. He's like, take the picture, puto. And everyone just laughed at me. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, one day. Yeah. You know, there's this, uh, I don't know if you're into conspiracy theories, but I made I one up. Um, and you <laughs> I, I made, and I want you, while I'm talking, I want you to think of the one that you think is like, needs, like, you, look, I, I can kind of believe in it. I'm working on this joke where I, uh, I, say, the, I say the conspiracy theory is that uh, Magic Johnson never had AIDS. 
That's what they say. He never had AIDS. Beca- so, the, and we'll mm-hmm. workshop it right now. Kind of how they do on a, uh, we might be drunk. So basically the premise is, he, like I'm talking about how girls just, they're more harsher with their things. Like like uh, if if you want to forgive your girl, if she just throws you pussy, you'll forgive her. You're like, all right, good. Mm-hmm. I'm good now. They want. Like, you fucked up. Now you got to marry me. You got to give me a vacation. You got to do all this. And I said, the conspiracy theory, yeah, is, is that. And that, that he was fucking all these girls. And, you know, he didn't want to lose his family. So his wife was like, all right, you want me? You got to tell the entire planet you got AIDS. And I'll stay with you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's not going to scare the bitches away. He's still going to be cheating. You think so? You think Matt Johnson still fucks up? Even with AIDS? <laughs> yeah. You don't think there's other bitches with AIDS? Yeah, you're right. True. You wanna <laughs> And now and now you could go AIDS to AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you didn't have AIDS, you're like, damn, Magic Johnson wants to fuck? Like, fuck it, you know. Yeah, you're right. This girl's doing riskier shit. Yeah, that's so true. Met a girl one time. Talk talking about stars. Magic Johnson, bro. You know what I mean? We're not yeah. talking about some one bench. of the greatest. We're not talking about a bench player, you know what I mean? <laughs> Made him retire early. Uh, there, there, there's some there's some legs on that joke. I, I gotta work it in. But do you have a conspiracy theory that you fuck with? I fuck with a lot of them, I guess. Flat Earth, Moon's fake. Mm, I don't know. Simulation. Simulation's cool. I fuck with that one. You know. But, I think about uh, that every time I drive. I don't know if the moon. I don't think the moon's fake. I have you think we've been to the moon? I don't know if we've been to the moon. I don't know. Go. I don't know. I, that one's As a Joey Diaz thing. says, it looks like that shit's Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <They> <laughs> shot that at. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like more of like the the Alex Jones type conspiracies about like politics and shit. Like thinking there's some well, like, he thinks that the government way, or something. Like they're making the frogs gay, gay and shit like that. Which is true. We yeah, ended up finding out. That they are turning gay or trans or they're they're changing. Yeah. You can change their genitals. Mm-hmm. I mean, like everybody talks about Epstein's list, right? Like all the celebrities that are on their presidents. But it's like, uh, me and Luis were talking about. It. It's like he made a good point. It's like, what about the doctors on there? You know what I mean? The doctors control everything, like Fauci and shit. Like, oh, you know, like you yeah. have a doctor blackmailed. Like you could change the world, bro. That's why Bill Gates is like all into vaccines and shit yeah, yeah all, of, us, all of a sudden reason. he became i thought he was a tech guy and all of a sudden he's telling me how to conduct myself in in the healthcare world yeah he also bought mm-hmm. up a lot of um uh farmland yeah, yeah. a lot of land and he, he's a, he propo- a compound right he is a proponent of not letting people farm their own food yeah because yeah. they're gonna make that illegal mm-hmm. in some places it is you can't farm your own fruits where? vegetables can we look it up where it's illegal? i think it's in la probably you can't do shit in la though yeah you can't even smoke a cigarette and throw it out without starting a fire. But you could. You, you can't you walk could, too hard, or else a but landslide you could, happens. But you could live on the street with a machete in your hand and and rob the store. It's and buy drugs outside of that uh, the clinics. L A is free so shit. backwards, bro. Yeah, L A is so back. It's it used to be a place I thought it was really cool to visit like when I was younger. I was like, oh, this is cool. Being from New York, you know, you don't even think you'd ever even go to L A because it's so yeah. far. And then you go, and you're like, I remember the beginning, it was so dope, girls are hot, the beaches is cool. Now you go, it's like protests, you know, everyone's asking about Israel, Palestine, and most of those people can't even point on the map where it's at. Yeah. The true. majority. Doesn't say anything about uh, illegal to farm or anything like that. Homesteading's kind of like the weird middle point where you can't homestead in certain states, like... Or just because it's hard to do it and there's not enough, like, agriculture to do that? Well, all I know is that all of us... So, the, what I've been into, and I... This happened. So, I, I made love to a woman one time, right? Just and, once. And uh, twice. Yeah. If but I anyways, could hit once, I could hit twice. I did. And, yo, dude, so her kid's autistic, right? And I was trying to tell her on some shit why he may be autistic. Oh. And he shut down the pussy for the weekend. <laughs> and she flew back home. I bet. Let me tell, because I was like, no, there's some like things that, you know, if you get vaccinated too early, you know, they've seen, I'm, bro, you know me, I'm up all night reading nonsense, yeah. jerking off, and I, I was like trying to get, she was like, I've looked up every reason why he could be autistic. You wouldn't know. I go, when's the last time you read about it? When he was born? Because I was six years ago. Maybe he's autistic because his mom's a fucking hoe. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Maybe that. There I mean, may you're be, not still talking there, to this lady, uh, there right? There may be autistic gene and hoeness. Yeah. A lot too of many dicks in her mouth. Too many Jadens and and then uh, Jaylins mm-hmm. ru- running around. That was a name, dude. That was so heavily used in the early two thousands. Jaden. Jaden. Jalen. Jaden Smith. Brayden. Jalen Hurts. 
uh, anything with a Lin. Mm -hmm. That was like a huge mm -hmm. thing. To the point my friends who teach in school, they're like, yo, we got like 30, we have 30 Jadens. <laughs> girl and guy, because it can go either way. You can have a Jaden girl and a Jaden guy. Absolutely. But That's a light skin name. That's a light skin name. Jaden. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. J anything with a Lin, like, could be a little more dark skin. Jalen, yeah. It'd be a dark skin, yeah. Well, Jalen Brunson is light skin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to wrap this up in a second. But oh, yeah, go do bingo. Yeah, I got to go. <laughs> bingo, dude. You should come. It's so dope. It's yeah, so much go. fun. It's so much fun. Tonight we're doing, uh, what are we doing? We're doing prizes. Next week is cash. Ooh. And it's every Wednesday at Hi-Fi in Scottsdale, Arizona. Definitely come by. Check it out. Um, Reese, what, have you ever... Have you ever come to fisticuffs, fisticuffs in a in a comedy thing, or felt like you were? Nah, I'm really not too worried about any of these fools on throwing. Well, no, down. not that. Not that you're worried, but then you're like, yo, you need to chill. Nah, not with me personally. I've seen maybe it go down a little bit, but like, I had no problems like that. Nah, right? Nah. They kind of. I think people don't know how to act towards you sometimes, maybe. I mean, I keep to myself, bro. I don't really say nothing unless something's said to me, you know? Only, so. only on the court? Yeah, only on the court. But oh. that's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair game on the basketball court. See me at East Florida. <laughs> you got any shows coming up? Uh, I got some shows. When does this come out? Uh, right, the weekend before Halloween. Weekend before Halloween. I'll be doing some shows in Flagstaff on the October 26th, yep. Tucson November 2nd, and then uh, ReeseMunis.com for further dates. Yo, get me on Tucson. I, I do not got the plug in Tucson. I've reached out to Labs and nothing, yeah. and I'm like, yo, check my credits, and they're like, fuck you, we heard something. I don't know. That dude's a little crazy, bro. He's wild. Yeah, he's the a wild. The guy who runs Labs in Tucson? He's but a wild get me boy. on, because I would love to perform in he's Tucson. Cool people, though. Next time I'm there, we'll pull up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know because I, I got. I'm going to Albuquerque on November 9th. Five oh five. I never been. Shout out to the homies, uh, Josh Fournier, Zach Abeda, dog. Those are my homies. There? Yeah, go yeah, say what's up oh, to those bad, fools. Bad, bad, bad. So I'm supposed to go back again with Uncle Laser, and he's gonna be with like Cowboy Cerrone. And you're going to Burkett. When are you going? The ninth. Things like Saturday, Sunday, or something uh, like November? that. November? Yeah. On my roll. Hey. Yeah, come through. I'm, I'm driving. They're paying for my gas and everything else. Hell my yeah. lodging. There we go. So yeah. Um, one more time. Follow uh, Reese Muniz at Reese Muniz on Instagram, ReeseMuniz.com, right there. And then as always, you can follow Gatsby the Artist. Gatsby the Artist. Where else can they follow you? You have another page. Let's let's shout out that page. What page? Uh, your, oh, your uh, art Gatsby page. the photographer. Gatsby the photographer. You want to get pictures done? You want to be naked? You want to be afraid? You want to be gay? You you want to be straight? You don't, you're unsure? Gatsby's your guy. He can take a picture of you. Spread Eagle or however, which we need to take some new pics. And I did wear this shirt because I ordered go. it on some Chinese website for 11 bucks because it's basketball and I know Reese likes basketball. Certified Hooper. Yeah, Certified Hooper. And I think you got, oh, I thought you may have had that chain on. Kind of look like me. A little bit. <laughs> and as always, you can follow me at Eric Bernal Comedy. Go on Instagram. Check me out. Repost the best compliment you could ever do. If you cannot afford a ticket, just repost a video. That's better than most things. Check out Reese. He has some of the best content out there. One of my favorite ones is Ugly is Non-Binary. Yeah. And as always, guys, Eric Bernal, go fuck yourself. Thank you. And why the AZ is SVO? Jokes aside, the realest when you hear it coming from the Eric Bernard show is Scottsdale. Very young, get your phone in here, record. We going up now, let them know. SVO, sleepy hollow.